We haven't seen anything like this in decades. Energy prices are soaring to unprecedented heights. Food shortages in some parts of the world are starting to become quite severe. Rampant inflation is out of control all over the world. Meanwhile, economic activity is slowing down everywhere that you look. Some are comparing this current crisis to the stagflation of the 1970s, but I believe that is a far too optimistic assessment. Just about everyone can see that economic conditions are rapidly deteriorating, and there is a tremendous amount of alarm about what the months ahead will bring. According to a brand new Wall Street Journal NORC survey that was just released, the percentage of Americans that believe that the state of the US economy is poor or not so good is 83 times larger than the percentage of Americans that believe that the state of the US economy is excellent. A severe pessimism grips the US economy, and Americans report the highest level of dissatisfaction with their financial situation in at least half a century, poll results released Monday show. 83% of Americans describe the state of the economy as poor or not so good, according to a Wall Street Journal NORC poll. Only 1% describe the economy as excellent. Breitbart.com I would like to talk to someone from the 1% of Americans that still believe that the US economy is in excellent shape. To me, it is always fascinating to find someone that can completely deny reality, even when all of the evidence points in the other direction. The same survey found that the percentage of Americans that are not at all satisfied with their financial condition is the highest in at least 50 years. 35% said they are not at all satisfied with their financial condition, the highest level of dissatisfaction since NORC began asking the question every few years starting in 1972. 63% of Americans say they are extremely or very concerned about the price of gas. 54% say they are extremely or very concerned about the impact of high grocery prices on their household's financial situation. Just 13% say they not very are not at all concerned about gas prices, and 19% about grocery prices. Reaper.com In other words, this is the gloomiest that Americans have been about their own personal finances in at least five decades. Wow. One of the big reasons why people feel this way is because the price of just about everything is going up. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learn something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. In particular, the price of gasoline has been making national headlines just about every day. On Tuesday, it set another brand new record. The national average price of gas is now $4.955, reflecting an over 3 cent jump overnight, 28 cent rise in the last week, and nearly 64 cent rise in the last month. Diesel also hit another record on Tuesday, reaching $5.719. Currently, 16 states are experiencing an average price of gas of $5 or more. That includes Maine, $5.023, Massachusetts, $5.21, New Jersey, $5.032, Pennsylvania, $5.031, Michigan, $5.214, Ohio, $5.061, Indiana, $5.234, Illinois, $5.532, Idaho, $5.025, Alaska, $5.469, Hawaii, $5.493, Washington, $5.489, Oregon, $5.485, Nevada, $5.564, Arizona, $5.181, and California, $6.390. California's Mono County appears to be reporting the highest gas price average in the Golden State, $7.213. Reaper.com Unfortunately, there is a growing consensus among the experts that this is just the beginning. Here is one example. But the summer travel season just getting underway, demand for gasoline, coupled with a cutoff of Russian oil shipments due to the war in Ukraine, is sending oil prices higher on global markets. 
the national average for gasoline could be close to $6 by later this summer according to Tom Closa, global head of energy analysis for the Opus, which tracks gas prices for AAA. CNN.com And here is another example. Bass Buddy Head of Petroleum Analysis Patrick DeHaan provided insight into record high gas prices, warning on Wednesday that we're going to be swimming in these high prices for a while. Speaking on Varney and Company, on Wednesday, DeHaan also revealed his forecasts for how high prices at the pump will climb, arguing that they could reach a national average of $6 a gallon in the coming months, but what seems like more of a guarantee is that $5 mark. Foxbusiness.com Others are even more pessimistic. In fact, the head of commodity trading giant, Trafigura, just warned that the price of oil could actually make a parabolic move in the months ahead. Needless to say, energy prices have a domino effect throughout the entire economy. When commentator Anthony B. Sanders contacted moving companies about his coming move out of state, he could hardly believe the quotes that he was given. As I line up my move from Fairfax to Columbus, I am getting a variety of quotes from moving companies. And wow. The cost of moving using a national moving company for a four-bedroom house is $15,000 to $20,500. That includes International, North American and Beckins. One of the reasons for the high cost of moving is the massive increase in diesel fuel used for trucking. Diesel fuel under Biden has risen 117%. And since it was revealed that natural gas often is used for electric charging stations, and that gas is up 281% under Biden, but there aren't many electric moving trucks yet. Confoundedinterest.net Could you imagine paying $20,000 to move from Virginia to Ohio? In the old days, you could purchase your own new vehicle for that much money. In this crazy environment, some companies are attempting to hide inflation by shrinking their package sizes. Joining the parade of downsized products is cereal stalwart Honey Bunches of Oats, which has seen the weight of its standard box, previously 14.5 ounces, lessened to 12 ounces, a reduction of roughly 17%, the UK paper said. Angel Soft Toilet Paper has also reduced its size from 425 sheets per roll to 320, while Bounty Paper Towels have cut their rolls from 165 sheets per roll to 147 late last year. Gatorade also cut its bottle size from 32 ounces to 28 ounces. DailyWire.com Do they actually believe that we will not notice that the packages have changed? And this isn't just happening here in the United States. At this point, this is taking place all over the world. In the US, a small box of Kleenex now has 60 tissues, a few months ago, it had 65. Jabani Flips yogurts have shrunk from 5.3 ounces to 4.5 ounces. In the UK, Nestle slimmed down its Nescafe Zera Americano coffee, tins from 100 grams to 90 grams. In India, a bar of Vim dish soap has shrunk from 155 grams to 135 grams. Endtimeheadlines.org Our standard of living is falling with each passing day, and that process is only going to accelerate during the second half of this year. In a desperate attempt to keep living the way that they always have, many Americans are turning to their credit cards at an alarming rate. Needless to say, that is only a short-term solution. And at the same time, overall economic activity continues to slow down. The closely followed measurement from the Atlanta Federal Reserve Bank suggests the economy could be headed for a second quarter decline in gross domestic product, the broadest measure of goods and services produced in the country. The GDP Now tracker shows the economy grew at an annualized pace of just 0.9% in the spring, a steep decline from its previous estimate of 1.3% on June 1st. FoxBusiness.com If US GDP is actually negative for the second quarter, that will be two quarters in a row, and that will mean that we are officially in a recession right now. But what we are heading into in 2023 and beyond is not going to be just a recession. Ultimately, we are heading into the sort of nightmare scenario that I have warned about for years. It took decades of very foolish decisions for us to reach this point, and our leaders in Washington continue to make very foolish decisions. 
So, the truth is, that there are no long-term solutions in sight. Only pain. So if the American people are this upset about the economy now, how will they be feeling six months down the road? Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this. They have done a lot for us all. And thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.